Hello and welcome to Unit 4, Lesson 5, Conditionals Explore. This uh, brings up a new idea, conditionals in computer science, and it builds off of the work that you did in Unit 4, Lesson 1, where you started to use manipulatives to talk about variables. Today we're going to do the activity together. Um, so to get started, you are going to need a sm small snack of red, yellow, and blue stickies. Um, like these. If you don't have these colors, that's totally fine. You could pick three different colors, but we're going to use the two colors that you used last time to describe uh, strings and numbers. And then we're going to need an additional color because we're actually going to add an additional type um, to our knowledge base. We are going to also need some plastic baggies like you had before, a pen and pencil, and a dry erase marker. Which one of these. Um, if you don't have a dry erase marker, but you want to write on the bags like we did last time, another option might be to take a piece of paper and put it behind the bag, then write directly on that paper, and so you can see through the bag your variable label um, for that particular bag. So if you have these items and you would like to physically move them around, go ahead, pause this video right now, find those within your house, and come back together. If you don't have these items, but you still want to have that visual manipulative, um, please use the manipulatives created by code.org and shared with you on Code Studio. So either way, take a moment and pause this video, get your supplies, and when you're ready, come on back. Welcome back. Um, we have already thought about information, and information can be stored as numbers. Those are things from with the digits 0 through 9. These don't have quotation marks, and we're going to use yellow sticky notes to represent numbers. We've also talked about strings. These are characters. They are inside double quotes, and they are red sticky notes. So anything that can be a word, a string, might also include numbers, um, but things inside of quotation marks will be a string. So. Today, we're going to add another item. This is called a Boolean. A Boolean value is either a true or false. And for that, we are going to use the blue sticky notes. So go ahead and right now, write one true sticky note and one false sticky note. Write true on one and false on the other. Pause me if you need to and write down true and false. You will only need one of each of these. Okay, keep going. So a Boolean value helps us determine whether something is true or false. Here's an example. We have an expression, which is three is less than eight, and we want to determine what this evaluates to. So go ahead and hold up to the computer or to yourself, the um, sticky note that evaluates correctly here. Is this a true statement or a false statement? Three is less than eight. This statement is true because three is in fact less than eight. And so we put true on our sticky note. This tells us this is a true, eval it is evaluates to a true statement. And I want to pause here and take a moment and look at this comparison operator. It's a clue that we need to stop and evaluate for a Boolean value. So anytime I look at um, my code and I see an expression with one of these comparison operators in the bottom of the screen, you'll see six different versions. That tells me, ah, pause, go ahead and evaluate this for a Boolean value, and then continue on working with our code. Um, these are our different comparison value operators, excuse me, and the less than symbol is one of these. We also have others which you may or may not be um, familiar with. We have less than, greater than, those look pretty familiar. Less than or equal to is something that we usually see on a computer screen um, or in our math class perhaps as something that looks more like this. But on our computer screen and when we are typing with our keyboard, we don't have that button on our keyboard. So we use the less than followed by the equal sign 
um, to mean less than or equal to. And similarly, this might be greater than or equal to in math class, but in computer science, we use the greater than followed by the equal to sign um, in our programs. We also have an equal to symbol right here. And that's a little bit different than what you've thought about, again, in math class, where we just have one equals. But here we have two. When we look at something with two equal signs in a row, that tells us we want to evaluate whether an expression is true. For example, is three equal to eight? Not true. Um, rather than having a value with um, in just a single equal sign, which would tell us I want some thing, some variable to get the value eight. For example, x gets the value eight. We also have one more, this is not equal to. So over here we have the exclamation point followed by an equals to is not equal to. For example, three is not equal to eight would evaluate to true. So when we're evaluating, we must make sure that everything on one side of an operator is evaluated first or reduced before we can compare. So here's an example of a, a slightly more complicated expression. We have three plus six is less than eight. The first thing that we do is process what happens on that left side. And we say, is three plus six less than eight? Okay, let me figure out what that evaluates to. Three plus six is nine. And then we check, is nine less than eight? True or false? What do you think? Of course, nine less than eight, not true. That is a false statement. So this whole thing, that three plus six is less than eight, would evaluate to false. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to work through this process for a minute. So you're gonna pause the video you're going to evaluate the expressions on each side of the comparison or operator. Perhaps use your manipulative. So go ahead and make some post-it notes, process them out, and then determine whether the whole statement, for example, six minus three is less than four plus one. Does that evaluate to a true or a false statement? So determine what each side of the expression evaluates to, and then evaluate the expression for a Boolean value. Go ahead and pause this video, take a moment to walk through these, and then we will double check your work together. So you're going to be on the second page of your assignment, and here's the problems for you to work out. You can use these stickies over here and to help you. So you're gonna evaluate each, each expression first. I can drag one up here. And I'm going to do the expression 6 minus 3 and put the answer right here. And then for this one, I can drag up another one. 4 plus 1. I'm going to have 5. So I have 3 is less than 5. And then I decide is that true or false. And I can type the answer. If you have three more problems to do, remember you're going to evaluate each expression and then do the condition and evaluate to true or false. This third one is a little tricky because you have two math problems on this side. First, you're gonna do the parentheses, then multiply by three, and then you have the last one with equals equals. So as the video said, you're gonna pause right now, just stop the video, do the problems, and then start the video back again. Take a look at what we've got here. <laughs> 